Good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, your attend attendance this morning uh, to our Board of Commissioners meeting. We will begin as is customary with the observance of a moment of silence. Thank you. Please rise for a pledge to the flag. Pledge to allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. It's now time of, uh, before we get into the formal agenda, if there's any uh, public comment. Uh, we will accept that now. Seeing none, we'll move on to first. Before I get to the approval of the minutes, we do have an amendment of the uh, the agenda. We're going to add uh, Christine Hartman has a uh, MATP participation grant document that we will add at the very end of the agenda. And uh, just to announce that, since it didn't make the uh, Agenda that everyone had access to. Motion to add I like to will make that motion to, <clears throat> to add that item to the agenda. And I'll second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any additions or questions? Or not? Yes? Question? Somebody said they couldn't hear you. Okay. Um, speak loud. More yes. loud. Is it on? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. <clears throat> so moved. We'll now look for approval of the minutes of our July 18th meeting and our workshop of July 17th. We'll update those minutes as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so moved. Mrs. Newen, you have the floor. Thank you. We had receipts on July 30th and July 31st of $3,555,183.61. That brought us to a total cash of $8,227,815.27. Our expenditures this week were $3,563,000. $830.33. The tax claim is $283,610.18. Leaves us a balance of $4,380,374.76. I'll make a motion to approve the treasurer's report subject to audit. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, corrections, any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same mm -hmm. sign, so moved. Have a... I do have something else here. We yeah. have an intermunicipal agreement yeah. with Mount Gretna Borough. Yeah. They're one of the municipalities that we do not collect their municipal tax for. But as of January 1st, we will start collecting their taxes with our county, like we do with all the other, almost all the other municipalities, except for two. In the county. Okay. In a motion. I'll make motion to approve that resolution. Second. <clears throat> it's been moved and seconded that we approve that uh, tax related resolution. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you. I'll need signatures that Morning. Good morning. Introduce yourself and then you proceed. Michelle Snagley, Director of Human Resources. Personnel transactions under resignations and terminations. Amir Agat, Fiscal Technician at Children and Youth, termination effective July 22nd. Hillary Escobar, part time court clerk and monetary clerk of courts, resignation effective August 1st. Helen Gomez, General Clerk C and monetary clerk of courts, termination effective July 17th. Philip Wagner, part time court clerk at the Monetary Clerk of Courts Office, resignation with the last working day being July 18th. 
Darius Hubbard, full-time deputy sheriff in the sheriff's office, resignation effective July 24th, and Jason Ayers, regular part-time office support one and voter registration resignation effective uh, last working day of July 18th. Make a motion to approve the resignations and terminations as presented. Second. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded that we approve those transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs so moved. Under changes to status, transfers, and promotions, Bradley Ann Wagner, promotion from caseworker one in children and youth to caseworker two at the rate of $1,661.28 by weekly effective August 4th. Gina Gonzalez, transfer from work release assistant slash assistant counselor at the Lebanon County Correctional Facility to caseworker one in children and youth at the rate of $1,562.16 by weekly effective August 5th. Emily Mayanza, promotion from probation officer two, assistant supervisor in probation services, to probation officer three, field supervisor at the rate of $2,738.61 by weekly effective August 5th. Kyle Clements, transfer from full-time correctional officer at the Lebanon County Correctional Facility to full-time deputy sheriff in the sheriff's office at the rate of $19.94 per hour, effective August 5th. Make a motion to approve those changes. Second. It's been moved and seconded uh, that we approve those transactions. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. Under other transactions, <laughs> Area Agency on Aging would like to hire Kahara Neopani as an adult abuse investigator at the rate of $1,767.92 by weekly effective August 12th. Children and Youth Services would like to hire Alyssa Hassler as a caseworker one at the rate of $1,562.16 by weekly effective August 12th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Herman S. Crick Jr. as a court officer at the rate of $13.05 per hour effective August 5th. District Attorney would like to hire Edward Burns as a detective at the rate of $3,000, $3,026.36 by weekly effective October 14th. The district attorney would like to hire Jonathan Holland as an assistant district attorney one at the rate of $2,530.05 by weekly effective August 5th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Ashley M. Wolf as an administrative assistant one in the domestic relations office at the rate of $1,216.30 by weekly effective August 20th. The monetary clerk of courts would like to hire Cheryl Martin as a part-time court clerk at the rate of $15.96 per hour effective August 5th. The monetary clerk of courts would like to rehire Brittany Benich as a part-time court clerk at the rate of $15.96 per hour effective August 5th. And the Renova Center would like to hire the following two individuals, both as full-time direct support aides, both at the rate of $16.21 per hour, both effective August 12th. And that is Tanisha Lopez and Michael Lowry. Make a motion to approve the other transactions as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Okay. Aye. Opposed, same sign, so ordered. Moving on to salary board, motion to approve all transactions previously read plus the following. Jesse Guzman, add interpreter stipend of interpreter one. Uh, office support two and domestic relations annual stipend of one thousand five hundred dollars prorated from the effective date of August first, twenty twenty four. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those uh, salary board transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same signs. So moved. Thank you, Michelle. All right, Mrs. Webbs, would you like to uh, take center stage? Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? OK, I won't sit down then. Uh, thank you very much, commissioners, for inviting us to attend. And when I say us, I'm talking about all these folks back here who have devoted themselves to trying to make Dinosaur Rock a much more uh, visitor friendly site. Uh, in fact, our last cleaning, we had uh, two families show up. Um, and at the same time that we were cleaning in the most recent time. It is an asset for us. It's 200 million years old. Visitors and locals both use it, and we really want to make sure that Dinosaur Rock, as well as other locations that are natural in Lebanon County, are preserved and graffiti becomes no longer an issue. 
it takes a lot of people. So I'm only here because I suggested that you might be interested in meeting some of this group. Um, and may I take a moment? Yes, okay. we have certificates if we'd like to combine the introductions. Okay. You, can I have them come stand here? Yeah, sure. Come on up, everyone. <laughs> Amongst the folks are the uh, chief of police of South Londonderry Township uh, and his wife, Jenna, who used to be the manager of South Londonderry Township. So it's great to have had worked them hours and hours in 2023. Uh, and then the family, the Barleys, have not only themselves, three of the husband, wife, and granddaughter, uh, all attending and working hard. Reverend Stoffel from Lawn and the church, Astor, who worked. Um, Steve Blunt, I don't know how we couldn't have got we couldn't have gotten along without his work in both last year and this year. Uh, and Courtney, thank heavens from Lebanon Valley Conservancy, because if you hadn't been willing for the conservancy to join, then we wouldn't have had a 501c3 to ask you county commissioners <laughs> for money in our first year's endeavor to do that work. And consequently, they become extraordinarily important. Joe Forte, my goodness, Joe comes from uh, quite a distance away, and he started his work in Lebanon County on boxcar rocks and continues that. And when he came in 2022 for help us, we were a little bit uh, in trouble, and he happened to have a lot of equipment with him, which made it possible for us to be reasonably successful. And the game commission, Justin, Justin Clark is uh, the person, well, first the game commission made sure we could get a permit and come in that first year. The next year, they arrived full force. They helped in so many ways, especially with that. And provided elephant snot. I was going to say the elephant snot, which is $100 a bucket. Um, and so for the last two years, the Game Commission has been an incredible partner. And Lowe's itself has provided us materials and employees. And I know I'm missing somebody. Uh, let's see, anybody else? Carried the 500 gallons of water. That's what I'm yeah. Well, big mistake in 2022 was Lawn Fire Company volunteered the water. Unfortunately, they didn't give us the pressure hoses so that we couldn't spray the turkey snot off at the right time. Fortunately, Joe had brought some of his uh, pressure hosing apparatus so that we could at least get something done. We learned a lot in 2022. 2023 was hell on earth. Excuse my expression, because there were layers and layers of pain. They'd come back again. And so these folks that were there in 2023, they did a lot of work for hours and hours. This year, um, it wasn't quite so bad because we didn't have layers. Uh, and so we know that if we have, oh, I forgot, John Baird from the Lebanon Valley uh, Hiking Club, you're hiding back there. Uh, getting the hiking club involved is also really important. So I am very thankful that so many people participated uh, and many are missing and they're at work or on vacation. Uh, and they have said, we'll come back again if we have to. So thank you, commissioners. Thank you all for uh, participating as volunteers. Um, graffiti, we hope you will never have to do it again, but that's a lofty hope. <laughs> and I'll put me down for uh, Bucket of the elephants, not the way I hope to go on the year's leave. Seriously, you'll get us a bucket? Yeah, I'm sponsor for bucket. Oh, I like that. Sponsoring bucket. Can you hear that? Yeah, I'm just very successful. We'll pass these out outside when we leave. Okay. And, and if you don't mind, I'd just like to extend my gratitude to all, all the volunteers that have put their work into this. Uh, Courtney for helping to organize last year was really a driving force behind recruiting uh, volunteers last year. Um, you know, on behalf of the Game Commission, um, you know, our mission is to conserve and protect wildlife and their habitats. And so that is what the majority of our time and effort and, and resources are dedicated towards. Um, you know, and unfortunately, we generally just don't have the time to dedicate internally to aesthetics um you know such as graffiti you know important landmarks um and so that's was kind of a, a big thing for us to be able to mobilize volunteers to get a bunch of bodies on the ground and really put some sweat equity into this and uh you know in, in a day's time do what would take our habitat crew of three people a really really long time um and so that that is one thing that we are 
short on is, uh, you know, labors and bodies, um, but we do have equipment. And so that was, uh, I think, very, uh, very important, you know, to the commission to be able to supply that water. You know, we have UTVs and brush traps that we can get back in there. Um, you know, a lot of volunteers donated gas powered pressure washers, which aided tremendously in the removal of the paint, you know, after the elephant snot was applied. And uh, I think everything just kind of came together to, to make a really productive effort. And I uh, really want to extend our thanks uh, as the Pennsylvania Game Commission to the volunteers to keep keep Dinosaur Rock looking uh, family friendly. <laughs> I to personally thank everyone here. And, you know, what you've done is tremendous. And to have the state working with our local people is commendable. Thank you for having a listening ear and providing the elephant snot. That was great. Um, you know, I just think it's really a nice partnership and it's lovely to see. Thank you. And we take all ages. So uh, from these young high school students to this very old woman, um, we can all do our part to clean up those formations. And it might not just be uh, dinosaur, but it could be the boxcar rocks and so forth. And I do want to, if I may, enforcement is important. And so the Game Commission has installed cameras. So they will begin to, to and they actually have uh, found persons apprehended them in 2023 uh, and were fined and had to pay uh, restitution. I think it was around 5,000 in round numbers. Uh, so we, that's enforcement. The other E is education. How in the world do we convince mostly young people, because they were mostly 17 to 20, not to do this? and to appreciate nature. So we've got posters now with the Game Commission's phone number on it, as well as uh, for state parks and state forests. Uh, and wherever we can post them and go into the schools, we'll do our best to try to educate. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you. I can echo too, speaking of, of old, uh, I visited Dinosaur Rock probably 50 years ago and I'm boxcar rocks too. So uh, unfortunately, the graffiti was the problem then. Uh, I couldn't understand that, uh, but again, thank you all for taking your time to help clean that up. Uh, and, and, and they are gems uh, in our community. And uh, again, uh, thank you particularly Pat for organizing this so we could say face to face, thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right out there. Oh, okay. Oh, you were right next to the make your way through the crowd. I did. Yeah, this morning. Yeah. 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 All right, folks, we'll get back to our uh, regular agenda and uh, introduce yourself, please, and you may proceed. Good morning, Colleen Mapey, Administrator for Lebanon County Mental Health, Intellectual Disabilities, Early Intervention Program. I'm here this morning to present several items um, to our contract. So I will begin no, that with- public meeting, it has to stay open. Thank you. I will begin with fiscal year 2023-2024 contract amendments. There are 13 amendments, four are for mental health, seven for early intervention, and two for intellectual disabilities. 
In all contracts, we're needing additional units or services delivered over and above our original contract. <clears throat> the total is $71,633. We will work these expenditures into our current budget and allocations. Therefore, we are not requesting any additional county tax dollars. Make a motion to approve those contract amendments. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and second for approving the 23 24 contract amendments. Uh, any questions regarding this motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so move. There are some contract amendments for fiscal year 2024 2025. There are three contract amendments, all for intellectual disabilities. The total is $17,851. And again, we'll put these expenditures into our current budget and allocations, so we are not requesting any additional county tax dollars. Make a motion to approve the $17,851 in contract amendments for 2425. Second. There's been a motion and a second on the, put on the floor. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Most same signs, so moved. And finally, the Human Services Plan. Um, I'm presenting this morning for fiscal year 2024-2025. This is for your review and approval. <laughs> Our annual Human Services Plan is Pennsylvania's way of obtaining data and reports for how we are spending the block grant funds all year long. There are several county departments included in the block grant funding. So today I'm actually representing not only Lebanon County Mental Health and Intellectual Disabilities, but also the Drug and Alcohol Commission and Lebanon Community Action Partnership. We've been a block grant county since 2017. The block grant brings us together to write the plan, but more importantly, allows for great collaboration as they are flexible funds, which can be redistributed from one department that it may be under budget to another running a deficit. Our black grant funding totals $4,740,330. And that's split between those county departments in the following way. 61% for mental health, 28% for intellectual disabilities, 6% for the Drug and Alcohol Commission, and then 5% for Community Action Partnership. It is also important to note that the block grant funding is only a percentage of the overall funding for each department as we receive additional federal, categorical funds, and county funding. You received a copy of the Human Services Plan, which totals seven pages. So that's a rather large document. And again, I'm seeking your approval and formal signatures in order to submit the final plan by the deadline of August 12th. With the motion to approve that plan as presented. Second. It's been moved and second, and I would like to just uh, commend the team of, that put this together. It's a laborious task, and I think I counted nine participants that, uh, you know, put a lot of hours into producing this document. Um, and just Going back, my recollection is that in the past, if if something was left unspent in a in a department, it was sent back uh, before we had the block grant um, as a, a way of keeping those monies in Lebanon County and reallocating them. Is that pretty close? Yes, that's correct. And it, we really have not had any leftover or carryover funds for the last few years because we're able to ship those funds to another department that needs them. Um, in particular, for fiscal year 23-24, already we have transferred some funds to Community Action Partnership, specifically for rental assistance um, that is just really ever increasing. So that has been uh, quite a gift to be able to transfer those funds and utilize them for what our community needs here in Lebanon. It does go back to 2012 when I was chair. That was my main lobbying thing on, uh, for CCAP. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion regarding this motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. So moved. Thank you. Support. Appreciate it very much. Is uh, Mr. Torres here? <laughs> uh, 
Morning. Good afternoon. Good morning. And welcome. Yes. Uh, just introduce yourself and your affiliation, and then you can proceed with your presentation. Yes, good morning, Juan Diaz. My name is uh, Rafael Torres from the Web Empowerment Center, Tech Center Lebanon, here yeah. in the city. They're located at the former Elks building. Oh, yes. Just, so, yeah, <laughs> for, just for historical uh, references. Uh, first of all, and first, uh, foremost, I, I do want to thank the county commissioners for supporting this uh, community project from the from the start. Uh, we were awarded $750,000 of uh, American Recovery uh, ARPA funds uh, in order to establish this much uh, needed center. It is a workforce training facility uh, that's uh, located in the city in the former uh, Elks building in 9 South 9th Street. Uh, it was built in 1916, so it needs a lot of TLC. A lot of tender, loving care, and and that equates to uh, monies. Uh, it, the building is in 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 really good shape. Uh, it just needs uh, a lot of uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and and getting the building up to date for the next thirty years. We have a lot of challenges here in not only just the city but our county. I just wanted to briefly share a few uh, numbers. I did give the commissioners a packet of information. Uh, we love col uh, uh, data collecting, and this is true. These are folks that are actually walking in through our building. Uh, right now, uh, we're serving the majority of the population is coming in. It's between 24 and 44, uh, even split between males and females. Uh, primarily, the majority are, are Hispanic, 61 percent, but then the other 39 percent are non-Hispanic. We found we found out by asking them meaningful questions that 33% of them are non-high school graduates. Uh, this is uh, the numbers of folks that we've seen since we opened our doors in August uh, and that we've uh, provided services are 723 individuals and counting. So when, I say, when I'm sharing these uh, percentages, it's from that 733. 58% of them do not have access to a car. Their own transportation. They primarily speak English, Spanish, French, Creole, Russian, and Arabic. 68% uh, of them are renters. 62% uh, of them are unemployed. And 47% uh, of them are uh, do not have medical insurance. All those numbers matter because that's the, the reason that we asked for uh, an opportunity of responsibility to put a center together, a workforce and education training center, is to tackle those issues and tackle those monies. And we know that people need better access to, to their funds. They also need the, the secondary uh, uh, piece of education, which is how to manage your money. It's not about getting access to it, but how is it that you're uh, investing it? So we have a lot of supportive uh, classes that we're going to be doing with students. They're going to start or have started coming in, but uh, in September of this year, I, I'm proud to announce that we have 40 adult learners that will be uh, educated in uh, healthcare programs such as phlebotomy, medical assistant, uh, nurses assistant, uh, healthcare office uh, physician assistant. So we have 40 that are already in place. One of the big questions that I was asked early on is about educators. They've all been signed up to start teaching. I always said, and my wife, uh, would, that was one of my wife's concerns, she's the co-founder of the center, is that where we're going to get the educators. So the educators are here. Maybe they're just looking for a new, uh, a new nice place to come in and provide their talents. Actually, I got one back here that volunteered, uh, Dr. Duncan, uh, he volunteered to start engaging our healthcare uh, students. He's bilingual. He speaks Spanish and English, and uh, he wants to support this community. Uh, there are a lot of yes. Yes, I have a question. Yes, sir. Who is providing official certification for your nurse aid training and things of that nature? That's an awesome question because we partnered with Hack Harrisburg Area Community College who uh, provided all the instructors. So everybody's walking out with uh, credentials uh, from, from Harrisburg Area Community College. Uh, we've had a lot of good uh, financial support in getting our center put together 
and and getting it uh, to move forward. So it is a collaboration, a community collaboration it needs everybody the willing to come in and, and, and give of their part. We all have talents to share. It's just trying to find the ways on how to fit those talents. So I'm not doing the work. Trust me, I got plenty of work to do. <laughs> it's finding those willing uh, folks to come in and and impart their wisdom and just get our community uh, as a whole in a better place. Right, so, let me just, yes, sir. While I'm thinking of it. Um, when something new comes onto the scene, it's very difficult to break through and, and be, you know, get the awareness out there. I was at a luncheon yesterday and the speaker um, mentioned that anyone, they, they do um, utility support uh, checks up to $200 for but one time. To get a second time, because these folks, if they're unemployed, must go to WIPA or they must go to um, the uh, career, link. career link. Yes. So your, your, you know, your credibility uh, and the awareness factor is is you know out there and for them to have to go to you guys to you know see what kind of jobs you have available or have connections with and, and so on i think that shows that you've arrived at you know at this part of your program now you, in september you get the uh, classes going i think you're well on your way to that besides the challenge with the building getting this 1916 building up to 2024 code standards we had to make sure that we were actively engaging our folks and our folks need access to employment. Sometimes they just don't, they have the talents, the skills, but they're not aware of it. So that takes a lot of uh, time and we have to dedicate time in order to get them in the right place. I am full of stories and I could, I can be here all yes, day. <laughs> one, one. Uh, really cool. Uh, there was an older gentleman and there's plenty of them. Uh, uh, he's 60 plus and looking for work. He wanted to come back into to, to the workforce. And he goes to all these different temp agencies, which is primarily what most people do. Uh, he wasn't getting any callbacks. He shows up to WEPA on a Tuesday uh, morning and he engaged with our, with our uh, staff. Uh, remember early on when I started, I said, WEPA, yes, it's Spanish, it's Puerto Rican, we're screaming and shouting, you know, uh, yippee, yahoo, hooray. Uh, I, the center is available for everybody. So he was kind of sort of like, you know, what, what is this place? But as soon as he came in and got embraced, uh, the, the employment specialist sat with him Tuesday morning. By Thursday afternoon, he had a job. He had his resume prepped. He acquired some new interviewing skills because things do change. Uh, I equip personally because I'm involved in employment, uh, providing employment services. I personally train uh, my staff on what's new, what what uh, new trainings are out there or what to look for. And by Thursday, he had a job. Friday morning, he comes in and guess what he come? He came in with uh, uh, some flowers, some hugs, and he's like, this is what we needed in Lebanon for a long, long time. I'm not originally from here. Uh, I've been here uh, for the last eight years, but when we have longtime residents, tell me and tell us this is what we've needed for a long, long time. That just adds more fuel to my fire that I already had. I, I barely go to sleep at night. Uh, not that I'm worried. It's just the excitement of the future of what's going to be here. I don't want to, you know, interject too much. Yes, sir. I just want to say that if you didn't come from Lancaster County, Oof. where you got the exposure to the model the that was model. over there, I mean, that was vital to... Uh, credibility that you brought to that meeting when we we bought into your yes sir thank you for reminding me that sometimes i forget because i'm too involved but i actually recruited uh my friends from Lancaster, who i was involved with them early on uh to your point uh commissioner phillips uh i actually volunteered for the founder who established this tech center i was a volunteer uh, radio disc jockey uh on his uh radio station for over 15 years that's why I can carry long conversations. <laughs> I had to entertain people for a lot of hours. And uh, so I, when COVID came, uh, he was my first go-to for person. I knew that he had established the Tech Central. I, I knew the model very well. And I said, Carlos, you know, would you be willing to, to provide your wisdom and, and, and guidance on this? He said, as long as you lead it, yes. 
And I started getting yeses. I, I did present to uh, the commissioners then. Uh, this is a true uh, collaboration of not just local, but regional. Uh, we were able to uh, become part of the Tech Central model. Uh, this model has al already expanded into the capital city, uh, Harrisburg. They, they open up here in the next few months. York has since come on board after uh, we came on. Uh, Lancaster expanded to a second location, so they have two. Uh, Reading has one, and now uh, more recently, uh, the word uh, between the group is that uh, Allentown and Bethlehem are also going to adopt this model in the in their respective cities. We've had uh, community support, uh, support from the state. Uh, I mean, it, it's really been a, a true community effort. We were able to secure uh, state funding uh, for the first time at uh, a couple of years back for five million. Uh, last year we got an increase to to eight, and that was uh, for the yeah this is for the whole yes. region, not not just eleven. Sorry, it's for <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's for the entire region. Uh, with by by collaborating and participating in the sponsorship, I've been able to uh, bring in resources that. If we didn't have a center like this, would would not come to Lebanon County, uh, and we've been averaging for the last couple of years a little over a million dollars. Out of that is where we're going to start training folks uh, because we got to pay the instructors. Uh, we got to make sure that the place is up to date to continue this education. So I, I'm excited. We just had a groundbreaking that the commissioners were part of uh, with the renovations of the uh, healthcare training rooms. Uh, We'll soon have the ribbon cutting, so sometime in September you'll get an invite from me. Uh, and then uh, we do have to build a an elevator in the back uh, to provide access to everyone in the community, those uh, that are wheelchair and, and handicapped. Uh, and then it's just the future is is looking pretty bright. Uh, there is challenges along the way. I'm asking. Uh, uh, I'm seeking approval of a lien subordination with m and Bank, which has also been a big contributor to, to our efforts here. Uh, with that money, we'll be able to finish the renovations for the healthcare training uh, facility within the building. Uh, if we need it, yeah, if, you know, if we need it, we'll have it. But if we don't need it, then, you know, at, at least it's there so we can continue the journey. I have a, another challenge that I got to meet after the healthcare trainings. Is I have to provide a sprinkler system. Why don't we, can we just take care of this business? Oh, yes, absolutely. Great. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the lead subordination agreement as presented. And it's $250,000, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'll second the motion. Great. And that, that would give us second position. Yeah, if I could just take 30 yeah. seconds and explain. Yeah. Uh, so, as Raphael mentioned, there was $750,000 that was allocated from ARPA. Uh, you were the first grant that the county had done out of ARPA. And uh, so we had uh, filed a lien in place in the event that, that it didn't it didn't materialize. And so we were in a position at least to demonstrate to the U.S. Treasury that there was some protection in place. Uh, that's been in place. Uh, Raphael and, and your treasurer, Bill Campbell, were in a few months ago and said that they were pursuing some financing to do the improvements you're talking about, but um, with the county's lien in position that prevented them from being able to borrow. Um, so M&T Bank contacted us just recently. Uh, solicitor Matt Bugley received the subordination uh, agreement from M&T Bank. He looked it over. It's all fine. So this will uh, put M&T in a first position and the county in the second position and allow their borrowing to go forward. <laughs> Is there any discussion or any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Well, same sign, so moved. Okay. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, I'm always available. Don't go away. Uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Raphael. Uh, question just like Molly, again, while Jamie talked about that first uh, uh, allocation was made, there might have been some questions to. Going, I think you put those questions to bed. Uh, thank you for this, the progress that you've made. Think about 
uh, touching lives, changing lives, in some cases, maybe saving lives uh, through your work, but also to the building. That's a beautiful architectural uh, structure in our community, and you are taking good care of it and, and restoring it to where it needs to be. So thank you very much for all you're doing. Thank, thank you for your comments. We won't hold yeah, against you. Yeah. You're from Lancaster. We won't hold that against you. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm uh, a free agent, actually. <laughs> Maribel, too. The two of you. Oh, your yeah, your she's, team. She, she's she's been awesome. Without her, this. Yeah. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Thank you. We'll work with. We'll get the signatures. We'll get it to M T back and forth, and then we'll okay. we'll file it. Thank you. All right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we could tee this up so sure. you don't mind. Um, Matt's going to talk a little yeah. about um, the hotel tax uh, grants that you provide. Uh, the meeting uh, two weeks ago, there was a conversation about uh, adopting or had, or providing you with draft guidelines, which I've done. And then there was a question about whether about how those grants are done, if they are being done in accordance with the the act that was passed and which is now part of the county code. And so Matt is looking into that to get back to you, which he has done and they'll talk about. And then secondly, uh, if you'd like today to consider these new guidelines, if you have any changes or or uh, additions or anything like that to them, uh, we'll do that second. Did you so. want uh, Tourist Bureau to say what them? No, not really. Okay. Is, you want to talk about your opinion on the act first? Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Matt Bugley, County Solicitor. Uh, at the previous meeting, I was asked to provide a review uh, regarding our ordinance and our guidelines pursuant to the uh, to the hotel tax. And uh, upon a review of, of our current ordinance and the guidelines, I'm happy to report that uh, we are fully in compliance with what the county code requires. Um, I, just to provide some background for the board, Lebanon County and other counties have the ability to enact this hotel tax uh, and to collect money from hotels, Airbnbs, uh, et cetera, uh, by way of the county code. It was Act 142 of 2000, that's also referenced on our program guidelines, that gave the power uh, to the counties to impose this tax. There have been several subsequent amendments. Uh, there was one in 2016, which allowed uh, the county to collect 5%, which is what we presently do. And there have been some changes. Uh, however, in fact, actually the most recent uh, recodification of this uh, just happened back in May. Uh, it was Act 14 of 2024, which was signed by Governor Shapiro uh, several months ago. Uh, the language, however, governing third through eighth class counties remains exactly the same. So the criteria I, I provided the board with uh, with a brief memo, and it outlines the, the criteria uh, and how the county is to follow the imposition of the tax, how it's collected, uh, how it's then from the county treasurer's office, then turned over to our designated tourist promotion agency, Visit Lebanon Valley. And then from there, uh, the county then, uh, by way of the ordinance, provides guidance uh, and provides direction on how those funds are to be allocated. And one important uh, note I just want to mention, there's a 4% uh, uh, administrative fee that the county code uh, provides for. Our ordinance uh, provides that. Uh, the four percent in, in speaking with our treasurer we collect that the remainder of the money then goes to visit lebanon valley i i also want to note too um that that ten percent of the funds as it's presently uh, uh enumerated in our ordinance ten percent of the funds then comes back as you are aware it's just care it's ten percent of the ninety six percent ten percent of the ninety six percent that's correct that comes then back to the county for the county to administer a grant program the, the power to administer this grant program comes from paragraph four uh, in uh, this particular section of the county code. And there are two criteria uh, that- Can you be yes. more specific as to paragraph four? Yes, so it's it's under the section that we highlighted in the memo, and it's um, with regard to the uh, use of tax revenue. So it's, it's um, paragraph D, subparagraph four. And I can provide uh, the actual. Is that D? Yes. So on the yeah. first page of my memo, it's paragraph D. It's at the bottom of the page, uh, use of tax revenue. And then paragraph four um, allows the money to be used for 
uh, programs, expenditures, or grants that are directly and substantially related to tourism or a business convention or meeting travel destination within the county, augment and do not compete with private sector tourism or travel efforts, and improve and expand the county as a destination market as deemed necessary by the recognized Tourist Promotion Bureau. And there's two uh, tourist promotion agencies, I should say. There are two then uh, uh, sub subsections to that. The grants require a cash or in-kind local match of at least 25%, and the grants may not be used for signage that promotes a specific private entity on the situs of that entity, except where the signage also carries the logo of the recognized tourist promotion agency. Those two provisions are included in our grant guidelines. So the grant guidelines that we've been adhering to, that uh, applicants receive, uh, those the, both the what is eligible for grant money and those two conditions are presently included in our, our uh, grant program guidelines. So the as you can see, the the, the county code um, lays out the foundation, lays out the framework for how this money is to be used. Uh, and upon review of our ordinance, I think our ordinance uh, is is very specific uh, in referencing these how the money is to be used, the procedure for the collection, then the money goes over to Visit Lebanon Valley, and then from there, then it's allocated according to what is included in the ordinance. So uh, at this point, I would not recommend any changes to this. The only, I would, I would just have a very minor change um, for the grant program guidelines. I understand the commissioners have a draft. I would just add in addition to at the top as a result of passage Pennsylvania Act uh, 142. I would just add language and put in subsequent amendments, including um, the amendment in 2016, and then the most recent amendment, which was Act 14 in, in 2024, um, because it, there there is some confusion when you go and you read Act 142. You may not realize when you're reading it that that is actually not the most current version of this. And reading through the county code uh, with regard to hotel tax can be a little bit convoluted. There are special uh, special sections that govern different counties that have different populations. Fortunately, Lebanon County uh, is, we are being a fifth class county, we're governed by the provision that says any county from third class to eighth class. Uh, these are the provisions that we follow. <coughs> Question. Yeah. Um, this whole thing, uh, is a little troubling to me in that I know you're the attorney, but when I read this as a lay person, nowhere does it say the commissioner should decide the percentages. I voted against Act uh, or number 54, I think it was, um, because at the time, there was some nepotism with a commissioner on the board and somebody running the Tourist Bureau um, and, or and actively involved on their board. And so in addition to that, I, I, I don't see where it says that commissioners should set the percentages. The money is to go to the Tourist Bureau. I really like that we support the expo. Um, and, you know, when it passed, I could let, I know not both of you were here, but I could let my colleagues make all the decisions or, okay, it passed, now I have to do my job. So I started voting on the grants. But um, I find it unusual that we're trying to continue with this and change the numbers. The Tourist Bureau is designated by law to be in charge. I don't know how we're getting away with designating the numbers, um, who gets what and the amount of money. Can you explain that to me? I, I can, yes. So I, I uh in my research, looked at a number of different counties. Um, one of the counties that I had reached out to was York County. I had a good conversation via email with their solicitor, and she provided me um, with a, they have between your county and their uh, recognized tourist promotion agency, they have actually a memorandum of understanding. And so what their memorandum of understanding does 
is it it's a it's an agreement between the two parties which which indicates that uh, this is where the money is going to be allocated from the TPA. So yeah. fifty five percent remains with the TPA, and then uh, I could I can certainly provide you with a copy of what your county does. There are a number of other counties too. I I, I looked at quite a few ordinances from around the state. Um, I'll give you an example in Monroe County. They, uh, it's very similar where the money is designated to the tourist promotion uh, agency, and then the money then is distributed essentially back to the county like we do for the county to be part of a grant program for applicants to come in to, uh, to demonstrate that they are eligible uh, and that they uh, would be using the money in conformity with the law. So uh, this is something. So I, I understand. I understand your question. But uh, as far as the money um, with regard to when it goes from uh, the the TPA to other entities, this is something that other counties also um, have have demonstrated that they have. Uh, I don't want to say control over, but they being that the county is collecting the money, then the county is uh, setting the parameters for how that money should be used by the TPA in accordance with the law. Well, I don't read that in the law. And, and you know, when I was growing up, the, the saying was, um, you know, are you going to jump off the cliff too by doing what the others do without seeing it in the law? And... Uh, I, I had a concern then, and I have a concern today, that we are not really following the law. Once we turn it over to the TPA, we should have no authority. Who drafted those? Did they follow us? I mean, uh, Mon Monroe and York. The fact that it's not specifically denied in the, if, if, if it's not saying that it is illegal to do what we're doing. I mean, there's no, there's nothing in there that says what we're doing is not legal. absolutely. And, 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 I would have made that. Clear. And the county created the this. We, we're the ones who put this together as far as the guidelines and so on. So I think we have the ability to to dissolve it or continue it or do you know we that's, have pretty. That's correct. And and I just I want to stress too that that the the law provides for the the confines of how the money is to be used. And as long as that money is being used within the confines of this section of the county code, that is proper. And, and I understand your concern. Uh, the, the money, though, when you look at after the 4% administrative fee, you have a, a percentage that's going to visit the alley, which is being completely kept by them for them to do what they see fit. You have then a percentage going to the Expo Center, and then you have a percentage go, coming back to us. And the applicants for that pool of money then still have to adhere to the requirements. So I I, I understand your, your point. Uh, and I just, like I said, this is something I, I looked at a number of different counties, and there is nothing in the county code that <laughs> prohibits uh, this is our our ordinance. We set the the rate. Uh, we are following the dictates of of the county code, and and then in the ordinance, then we are putting additional um, additional uh, requirements on that money. Two questions: Is it four percent or five percent? I'm reading both percentages. So the administrative fee is four percent. That is collected by the county treasurer's office. The actual tax itself is five percent. The actual what? The tax itself. The, the tax that's collected from the hotels. Okay. Maybe 2016 or somewhere around there, we went from three to five, five to the one. Yeah. And just to add, back to listening to Commissioner Evans' concerns, again, this board was the only organization that had the authority to impose the tax, first and foremost. And so I would think it has, it has the authority to kind of delegate that, those, those funds. It certainly could delegate it to uh, the bureau uh, if it chose, but there's no reason why you should or, or or have to do that. Correct. Well, and and the the way that the statute is written, so it does. I'll, I'll point out here. Once the so the it says the revenues uh, shall be used by the recognized tourist promotion agency, but and then for example. Uh, it, it mentions paragraph four. So, so 100% of the money after a 4% administrative fee does go to the tourist promotion agency, which is required by law. But then we, as the county, in enacting this, we say that that 100% of that 
money that has to be divvied up among the grant program, the Expo Center, the Visit Lebanon Valley. So they're all consistent. With all, con all. all consistent with, with how the money should be used. And the, there's a list with regard to everything that it's to be used for. Um, also to the grant program, as I mentioned, the, the requirements for the grant program are included <clears throat> on our guidelines. And, and just we're here today to, to consider if we want to adopt this draft, if we're ready to do that. But uh, not, nothing mentioning about reallocating percentages, though that is something that I have an interest in um, discussing at some point, but not today. Um, we wanted, you know, I want to get some numbers to. So we're not reallocating money today. No, no, no. no today. This this was just his response to your question from of legality you know, the meeting two weeks ago. The the purpose. Or what you have in front of you for action today, choose is the guidelines for the grants that you award. Because, and this will be maybe the third revision or so that that has been made to this if you make those changes. So <clears throat> that's the action today. There's not if there were any changes to the allocations and such, that would that's an ordinance which would have to go through an advertisement period. And it's your legislation, effectively. You know, is what is what that comes. So, so, so just guidelines. Yeah, those just who have you, submit an application. You can change things every meeting if you want. Right. Yeah. Right. Is, is there an interest in doing this today? Has well, everyone had an ample time to? Yeah, the one that I, the one sentence that still troubles me, under C number five, the granting of funds is solely at the discretion of the county commissioners who reserve the right to withdraw grant funds or redirect the grantee for use of grant funds for an alternate project, should the grantee encounter factors which could negatively impact the project. I don't think it is solely at the discretion of the county commissioners. That's rather, we're talking, we're on this thing, Joe. Yeah, she's reading from that, but, but we're talking about of the 10% that you utilize for these grants, not not the overall. Not act, not not ordinance. No, this is just about no this is not an ordinance at all. These are these are guidelines. You, again, you can change these anytime you want. You can waive these. What you just read from number C5 is intended to give flexibility to either either for the commissioner to withdraw the grant funds if say something changes to the event, you know, or the event isn't what what is it intended to be, or and we, and you've done this in the past, or the or the applicant had a change to something that they're asking for you to, you know, reallocate it. This is two sided. Yes. Yeah. That's what we feel. Yes. Oh, well, you said it wasn't. No, or somebody said it. Wasn't. I just I, you had the other piece in your hand, and I, I well, all we're worried about is this. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about. I'm reading. You made it sound like I wasn't. I'm reading. I thought you were. I, I'm sure you're sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. Only Thank you. <laughs> so there's a there's a single two sided draft. And of that's the what I was addressing and reading from. Right, but that's not that. This has nothing to do with the 55, 40, 10. I forget the get it right, but uh, that's 55, 35, 55, 35, 10. That, that's not at all what this is. That's your ordinance. This is just guidelines to the 10 percent that you use. And C5 that you mentioned, that you, that you cited, is to give some flexibility to maybe ex extend a grant period or or change the scope of the grant if something changes with with an event that the applicant is holding or withdraw. That, that's all that is. And that's not changing. That's been there before. Is there an I, interest in the work for that? I can just highlight what, you know, what this effectively is doing is that it's the guidelines the changes to the guidelines are, are essentially to make a priority out of putting heads in beds and you know which is what generates the tax so so it makes a priority out of uh events that are uh being funded that will generate overnight stays um and and asking that the applicant provide some data or demonstrate that that's going to be the case um, you know, more more so than in the past, some of the applicants did a fantastic job of that, of, of demonstrating to you that they generated overnight stays. Some some didn't, and some it 
you know, some applications from my perspective, it's questionable whether they are generating any overnight stays. And then so then you really aren't sort of replenishing the fund by giving these grants to those events. So but that's again, it's entirely up to you. The guidelines are yours. Uh, you can waive the guidelines. You've done that from time to time, and that's perfectly allowable. Uh, but it's just putting more of an emphasis on it. And and to go back to what Matt was mentioning earlier, it still maintains the 25% match, which was which is part of the act. Um, this is a grant limit of five thousand dollars, as it has been. If you choose to change that, lower that for any reason, you may. Again, this is a draft. Just to just to get this out here and make some changes and mainly prioritize overnight stays. Is there a motion to adopt this uh, or to have some more discussion? But Matt did mention that he, he mentioned so the yeah. language. language. Just a subsequent yes, yeah. make sure that we're yeah, not 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 with no the newest updates to this law. Yep. Uh, so with that, the, those amendments. But Jamie, could we add something here just to state me just about priority of heads and tax? We don't really say that. And, you know, uh, it, it probably would not have good point to add that that's the highest priority of the yeah, the grants we, we receive. That is the number one reason. It is num it is listed number one, but I'd love to say it even and louder. Okay. And so we do get an awful lot of requests for, for very good events or good causes, but that's the goal here. So the application must include evidence event data or narrative that demonstrates that the event attracts tourists to host spent hotel stays. Did you want more than that? We don't decide the specifics here. Can we we well, you're going to adopt it, highlight it, or something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We can bold it. Bold it. Yes, that, that's that's a good way. And we we also include the date adopted. Because okay. So we can make sure we get the subsequent amendments. Yeah. The motion. Yes. Is there a second? Second the motion. Um, and for discussion, I do have one thing that I would like to uh, change if you would uh, consider it anyway in this motion or significant spending. I, I'd like to to get that out of there, which would mostly emphasize that 100%, you know, what we're focusing on is the uh, the hotel bed uh, heads and beds. Thing. Right. So I'll if I can speak to that, and then and I understand that you and I individually we talked about that briefly. So the this it states grant money shall be used for promotion of events that attract tourists to spend hotel stays or significant spending in Lebanon County. Um, I inserted that in the event that there's an attraction that that doesn't have overnight stays, but in your view is going to be a maybe a one day significant spend that it would give you that alternative but if you take it out we can still make the exception don't make the exception sure sure if you just want to don't want it point blank hotel stays then that's it if we agree to that it's you don't need that okay so you are proposing to amendment amend it and second that okay to remove it so it would read it would read to to attract that attracts tourists to spend hotel stays in Lebanon County. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Any questions? Any comments? Any other deliberation? And again, as Jamie said, we can change this next week if we want. We just wanted to get something because we have three that are, you know, hanging out there. We have like eighty five hundred dollars. So. Yeah. Okay, so but we don't, you know, we go through it because we haven't had the strength of that uh, emphasis. So that's this will help. And that and the you're maintaining the five thousand, which is a maximum. You can also choose in an application to say, you know, we're going to do a portion of the request. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Jim. <clears throat> what I'd like to know is if the commissioners would be willing to take some of the pertinent parts of the guidelines, specifically. This idea of emphasizing stronger heads and beds and some of the other points that are in there and actually implement them into the ordinance because, as Jamie just said, they're just guidelines and you can waive them at any time and do as you please. So it seems to me that if you really want to put teeth into it, as 
more teeth into it, as Commissioner Kane just suggested, that the guidelines be incorporated into the ordinance. So my question is, are you willing to? Do you think that a, an applicant is going to make the distinction between whether it's an ordinance or a guideline? Well, this is what they're going to be dealing with. I, I, you know, I just think it gives more teeth to your actions and more accountability on the commissioner's part to ensure that the monies that are coming in, that tourists are paying, they come to the county and then go to the LV, are actually being used what they're intended for. Because as Jamie expressed, sometimes it's pretty questionable whether or not the money that's going out is actually putting heads in beds. They're going to projects that you like and they're admirable, but are they really putting heads in beds? And if you want to have something that has teeth, then it seems to me, and I'm asking, do you have the desire to actually write some of these and put them into the ordinance, advertise it, and go through all the dual process? Because otherwise, it's really kind of like an exercise in utility. Well, if you're I, not really going to put I, teeth I, into I'm it. Little... Yeah, I'm going to dismiss that. Uh, but, but you would you want to do that? No, because I think this does. I don't think this is an exercise in futility. If we're giving guidelines to an applicant, and here's what you have to go by, and they say, "Well, but I know that really it's not in the ordinance." So I, I think I can get around this by talking to two commissioners. You know, this is meant to, in my opinion, to slow down the the number of applicants because they'll they'll read the and they'll say, well, "Wait a minute, my thing." I'm just doing this, and it's not really going to put heads in bed. So, you know, I appreciate your suggestion, but I, I, I'm just one. If I could, if I could expound upon that, then <laughs> when, when the applicant comes, each application obviously goes through the board, and so the commissioners are they're very much aware of the criteria. So, so that's where the the decision is going to be made. So, while I I understand with regard to the the discussion putting it in the ordinance versus putting it in the guidelines, but the guidelines are what the the individual applicants are getting when they when they seek this money. So as long as it's in the guidelines, and then the commissioners are the ones that are determining whether or not this money is being used appropriately. So if I can follow up, the guidelines have existed prior to this. One of the guidelines is is that it's it's stated in your guidelines that have gone out to applicants that. It should not be used for people who are for hotel stays. It's not to be used for hotel stays. That has come up at this meeting many times at this meeting, and Commissioner Lutz has brought up that you're giving money and it's in the person's application that stated that they were using the money to pay for judges who are going to be at the expo center and judge events. So I would suggest that. You have the guidelines, but that hasn't deterred people from in the past for applying for funding for their pet projects. If they're still going to try and work around the system, and you've had that guideline that predates still in there, that you should not pay money for hotel stays, that that money should not be used for that. But that's what has happened in if, the past. So how are we going to ensure that in the future that we're actually putting heads in beds? We'll be the judge of that. My, my answer to that is that with this emphasis on this, I'd be more careful, but I still, I'd have to still think about if uh, someone is asking someone to be a judge, it, this isn't the, the people that are running it that are staying in those, asking to pay for their staying in the hotel. I mean, I don't want to get into the minutiae of that, but that, that's been my, my thinking that if it's somebody that they're asking for a judge to come from Scranton, and uh, stay overnight. Um, that's different than the person that's sponsoring this event and asking us to pay for their stay in the hotel. Uh, that's the spirit of it that I um, have been thinking of. Yes, question. Yeah, I'm Trevella Lebanon City as somebody who's attended almost every commissioner meeting for the last three years. I understand what Jim is saying and I'll bet if we compared notes, we'd have the same examples. Um, that we're thinking of. I totally agree with what he's saying and how it should probably be handled. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Any further discussion or questions? If not, all in favor of the motion as presented, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried two to one. Thank you.
Anything else? Matthew? I have nothing. Mr. Anderson is due. Yes, an entourage. Morning. Morning. Thanks for waiting. Your phone bounce. Yep. Without turning around. Oh, everybody? Yeah. No. <laughs> I think it's it. Yeah, I can introduce myself to you. After that, I don't know. Right. Uh, sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Michael Anderson, Director of Domestic Relations. Tara Vankovic, Deputy Director. Good morning. I also just brought some uh, some individuals from my office uh, just so they could be here to be kind of recognized for. Uh, what we uh, are here for today. Okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, August is recognized as uh, Child Support Awareness Month. Uh, so uh, we have been planning on trying to make sure that the community knows the services that we provide here in Lebanon County. Um, our name, Domestic Relations, does not really match what we do. Uh, and we are confused a lot with domestic violence, which we are not. So um, one of the things we thought was important is to um, have events um, that in conjunction with Child Support Awareness Month that um, the community knows the different um, services we provide, which is family support, um, locate services, and uh, paternity, also no dance parentage. Um, and so we really wanted to, you know, have this outreach. Um, and so um, talking with the president judge and, and with Jamie, we had approval to do an event on August 9th from 10 to 2 here out back of the municipal building um, so that people can come um, either with cases, without cases, just people in the community want to know some of the services we provide. Um, we're just going to have that information available for them um, and answer any questions that they have. Um, if, you know, if somebody that's never dealt with um, child with child support or domestic relations before, we're going to have information for them. If it's somebody that already has a case with us, we're going to have people available up in the office um, to answer those questions for them. We've pretty much made our schedule available for for the community that day. Um, that's what we're going to do. And we hope to, to build upon this in the future um, if this goes well, trying to get the word out. Um, so we really want people to know we're here for them. Um, a lot of times people think about domestic relations and, you know, we're not looked at favorably. And just because, you know, sometimes people aren't happy. Some people don't think they're getting, not getting enough support. Others <laughs> think they're paying too much support, you know, and that's a fine line, obviously, but um, we want the pe we want people to know we're here for them and we're we're going to do the best we can. Obviously, we're part of the court system, so the courts are also involved with child support. Um, but um, that's our main goal is to try to get support for the kids. Um, and so on um, August 9th, we're going to have um, some activities for kids. We're going to be available to answer questions. Um, I have flyers that we're going to have out, and so we appreciate. Um, the county allowing us to do it and the president judge. And so um, we just wanted to uh, bring that to your attention today. And then also um, the proclamation for the child support awareness. Yes. Okay. If I may, I think a succinct date, time, you said the place, but also about the book bags. Yeah, so we're going to do um, a book bag giveaway. Um, we are originally wanted to do two. Um, we have enough materials at this point from the donations, not only from people in my office, but people from other offices. We're going to do three. Uh, so we're going to do a raffle for those. Um, and then we are going to have little fun treat giveaways for the kids until they last. We have so many bags of those. Um, you know, just a fun thing. Normally with child support, we don't allow kids in our office just because of the nature of what goes on. But on the on the ninth down there where kids are welcome, hope to see a bunch. Okay, again, August 9th, 10 a.m. to, to 2, 2 p.m. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be out back uh, right near the stairs. Thank you. We do have a proclamation prepared. Jamie, would you? Whereas August is Child Support Awareness Month, 
Let it be known that the County of Lebanon is pleased to recognize and observe August 2024 as Child Support Awareness Month, hereby recognizes the hashtag Support for Families National Campaign for Child Support. Whereas this year celebrates the 49th anniversary of the Title 4D Child Support Enforcement Program, where Pennsylvania's commitment to providing children and families, as well as caregivers, the emotional, medical, and financial support they deserve and desire. Whereas the 2024 slogan for Domestic Relations Association of Pennsylvania, DRAP, <clears throat> is helping families today for a brighter tomorrow. And whereas Lebanon County is focused on improving the lives of children and families by providing excellent customer service and establishing procedures to make child support a reliable source of income. Good relationships build trust, and that trust helps collect more support and build a strong foundation for children. And whereas in the federal fiscal year of 2023, child support programs nationwide collected $29.6 billion and served one in five children in the United States, with Lebanon County collecting $14.5 million. <clears throat> whereas child support has served 12.7 million children nationwide, and 97% of child support collected went to families, providing a reliable source of income for families to help their children, their children thrive. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the County of Lebanon hereby encourages citizens to join the national effort toward awareness of child support and hashtag support for families. Make a motion to approve the proclamation as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. And I'll just add before we vote that a lot of difficult uh, work is done in this building and throughout the county uh, employee. And I just want to say that your department uh, has, you know, some of the most difficult work to do, and it's the most vital work uh, of all that's done in this building. So we appreciate uh, what you come to work to do every day, and and uh, and with the quality that you do it. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, any comments? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs. So moved. Adopted three zero. Thank you. Appreciate it. We don't Thank you all. Copy the proclamation for you, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, i the first. So, yeah, it's probably great. Okay. Jamie? Yep. But, uh, five items here, yes. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, real estate exemption requests uh, or applications for disabled veterans. I have one, Aubrey Satino of Lambs Lane, Jonestown, having met all the requirements for eligibility. I think a motion to approve that request. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that real estate exemption. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. Uh, have uh, recommended reappointments to the Lebanon County Commission on Drug and Alcohol Abuse Advisory Council. They are Tina Litz in the cr criminal justice category. This term would expire February 19th of 27. Actually, all three of these would expire, will expire February 19th, 27. Bonnie Loy in the optional category and Marilyn Nolte as a human services professional. Make a motion to approve the appointments as presented. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those uh, reappointments. Any questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. I have a resignation from the Children and Youth uh, Advisory Board of Amy Custer from Levin. Take a quick motion to accept that. I'll make a commission to approve that. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept that resignation of Amy Custer with our thanks for her volunteer work. Um, any comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Well, same sign, so ordered. 
and on the Lebanon County Area, G Area Agency on Aging, Aging Advisory Council member. Lots of A's there, sorry. Um, we had a resignation of the council member, John Prorubiansky, and that was on, on uh, June 20th, or after the June 20th commissioner meeting. He's no longer able to serve as a member. He's moved out of the area uh, to be closer to his children. And they have found a replacement that they recommend as a new council member to serve out the remaining the remaining term for John. That is Faye Fox, who is a retiree from the department, who is a consumer and has volunteered at the Area Agency on Aging for a number of years now. And she's agreed to join the council to finish out the remainder of that term, which goes to June 30th of 2026. So you can find the resignation and then put motion. Make a motion to approve the um, resignation and appointment as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we accept uh, John's resignation and with our thanks and also uh, this box uh, being replacing John. And uh, any questions regarding this motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sentence, so moved. And last item, which was added to the agenda at the beginning, is the uh, participation grant agreement and assurance of compliance for the medical assistance transportation program through the community action partnership. And this is simply a uh, an assurance that all of the requirements are being met. I sign off on that. And to my knowledge, this has not changed for a couple of decades. It's something make, annually that must, that must be done. Make a motion to approve. The grant agreement with the MATP for CAP. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve this document. Mm -hmm. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. Well, I have. Okay. If there's no further business to come before the board. We look for motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. Thank you for your attendance and your input. Please stay adjourned.